How's it going everyone? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. Today's video, we are going to be talking about anti-OSINT. Now, what I mean by that is just cleaning up your digital footprint online. I couldn't think of a more catchier term than that. So I talk about OSINT a lot in this channel, gathering information, but have you looked at yourself on the internet? I sure as hell have, and it was not pretty a few months ago. However, since I went through and clean some things up. It looks a little bit better now. So we're gonna be talking about all the different things you can do uh, as far as removing information that these data aggregators have collected on you uh, against your will uh, that they sell to other companies. So we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things um, and just how you can stay kind of not anonymous online because I don't believe that a person can be 100% anonymous online, but doing your due diligence to have some decent OPSEC. So a little bit about myself, uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm Cody, I make content about OSINT and such like that. I am completely aware that I am not 100% uh, anonymous or findable online. I've kind of accepted that risk, especially having this YouTube channel with my name on it. So take all of this with just coming from my perspective, uh, my threat model, and such like that. This may not be for you if you're looking for like 100% anonymity, because uh, for me personally, I can't do that. I don't need to, and I don't need to go through those extra steps. So this isn't gonna be like a one size fits all. This is just wor what works for me and probably will work for many other people. So um, actually, before I share my screen, so, so what is a digital footprint? So I'm sure you could probably guess what that is, but that is just, any sort of information that could be attributed to you through something like a simple Google search, or if you're doing something where you can pivot from one information to another. And I'll talk about those kinds of techniques that I use to find people like missing people and how you can kind of avoid, you know, that sort of pivoting. Any sort of identifying information about you, that could be your name, could be a user handle, could be where you work, could be, I mean, just things of that nature, just a fingerprint that could be attributed to you. And I will use an example and, and I will um, I will blur out her uh, information. But there is a particular individual that has fairly decent OPSEC, but I'll show you kind of gaps you can have with OPSEC uh, in that manner. So let's go ahead and just scope down digital uh, a digital footprint real quick. So I'll go ahead and load up everyone's favorite search engine, Google. So right here, this is the front page of everything. And for me personally, this is kind of what I want. I want my YouTube channel, my LinkedIn, TikTok that I don't really use, things you know with gray noise, YouTube channel, GitHub, old photography page. But outside of that, there's really not much else. And that is by design. You could click on images. You can see this cringy photo from my old Flickr account, uh, and, you know, like that Facebook account and all that, and I guess MySpace. But other than that, I was able to remove a lot of information uh, fairly seamlessly, and it took about 30 minutes. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So there's a book out there by Michael Bazell. Uh, many of you pr probably are familiar with that name. Uh, he made the, uh, the OSINT uh, techniques book. I have it somewhere over here. Uh, phenomenal author. I would 1010 recommend getting the book called uh, Extreme Privacy. And I followed the guide in that. We have free guides, data request guide, data removal guide. That's the one I want. So data removal resources. These are a bunch of different websites uh, that Michael has personally went through to remove information. So uh, he boiled it up, and there's actually only a few websites that kind of get the most bang for your buck uh, as far as information removal. So the Google search that I showed you, um, you know, it was just like photos and websites and such like that. I, I really like this tool for finding people. So like if I type in my name, Cody Bernardi, and then, you know, just do Washington State, my personal information was all up in here, uh, you know, addresses and such like that, but it's not there anymore. Um, which, you know, was a blind spot for me. I never really thought about getting that information removed. However, it is possible. Now, I've also accepted the fact that my address was out there at some point. So again, 
take all of this with like you're doing this ret uh, retroactively versus just not doing it at all. So, so this is the results for myself. And I'll talk about some other things that you should look at, uh, blind spots that you might have uh, outside of just your own personal information. So with that, um, there are a couple websites. So there's Spokio, MyLife, Radaris, Intellis, Ben Verified, InfoTracer, and True People Search. And all of these different websites have a data removal guide to them. And we will go back to the Intel Techniques resources right here to... Uh, to do that. So we'll do the data removal guide and we will go with Spokio first. And a lot of these companies aggregate information from one another. So for us, the removal link for Spokio is spokio.com slash opt out. And I'll put all this information in here. So what you could do is you will look up your name on Spokio. So I will do this. So Spokio, Cody Bernardi, Washington, there is nothing. However, there is another Cody Bernardi out there in Minnesota. So we would take this link right here, throw it into here, and then you put your email address, I'm not a robot, opt out. And it was that simple. It, take, it says your opt out request should be 48 hours. Once you do that, then Spokio will remove your records on your behalf, which then feeds to other data aggregators out there uh, and would also remove those records. Because I, I kind of assume that these companies are just making like daily API calls to Spokio and all these other companies and just removing records. Can you all shut the fuck up? Everyone banging my line on Discord right now. Um, but yeah, and making API calls and removing records that aren't, you know, from Radaris or Spokio and all that. So I'll put links to all these down below, but it's really that simple for all of these companies. Now, that is for the USA. Uh, obviously, if you live in the EU, uh, you know, you have GDPR. And then if you're a California resident, you have the CCPA. And you have a little bit more rights than just like being at the whim of these companies, you know, for being, you know, good cookies and removing your information, even though they don't technically need to, if I understand the law correctly, which I probably don't. So country or region. So if you're in the EU, again, GDPR, so we will look up uh, uh, Germany. First name, last name, I am acting on the behalf of myself, you know, whatever it is. And I don't know what their SLA is for removing that sort of information, but it is, it is a possibility. So one thing that I use as a technique when I find missing people is once I get my hands on an email, it kind of opens up a Pandora's box as far as reuse of that email. This is a security technique called, uh, well, in theory, credential stuffing without the credential. So you take a, uh, a an email address, a known good email address, and try that email address across all these other platforms. So once I get a hold of someone's email address, you could do things like search that email in Facebook. You can, I mean, just throw it into quotes on you know whatever social media page. You can try to create an account on a on a website with that email address. I mean, there's so many possibilities you can use with uh, with an email address. Um, so, what I recommend in order to kind of prevent that fingerprinting, and unfortunately, the only product I have off the top of my head as far as like continuous management of email addresses is the iCloud email relay. Uh, which is a paid service with Apple. But however, uh, the way it works is that you can create a unique email address for every single website and basically just forwards that, you know, any emails to that uh, inbox to your main email address. And the uh, accounts that you're creating, they wouldn't know any better. Now, this is great because you could do a couple things. You can, um, you know, kind of spread out the risk of your email being associated with the breach. So you personally being associated with a data breach. Secondly, it prevents things like, again, credential stuffing, fingerprinting of you and such like that. So I would definitely recommend that. And of course, like if you need to do like one off, um, you know, emails just to validate your email to create an account, you can, I mean, there's so many different burner accounts out there that you can use and it will just give you like some random email address. So this one right here, create an account with that. 
and they'll show up in this inbox and you have this for like five, 10 minutes, something like that. Okay, so moving on. So VPNs and Tor. One of my first videos I ever made was about most people not needing a VPN. Uh, the idea of VPNs being sold as this like security product isn't necessarily founded um, because most people don't need it. Most people are browsing the internet using something like HTTPS. Data is not going to be intercepted unless someone in a coffee shop has some crazy cryptographic zero day that they're just burning in public for whatever reason. Uh, so uh, VPNs don't really add that extra layer of protection. It's just shifting your data to the VPN service providers servers. So keep that in mind. However, uh, one thing that a VPN does well at is mask your IP address to the end, you know, wherever you're browsing. So if I was, you know, going on to youtube.com via VPN, youtube.com will see that, okay, the IP address connecting to us is, you know, a VPN and not your home network. And uh, like, again, like websites like that's them.com does uh, IP attribution uh, so that's where a VPN would come in handy just because it kind of spreads that load around and all that. However, the second option, which I would always recommend for this, is just using Tor as a VPN. Um, you can set up Tor, I believe you could set up the exit node to be a certain country. So you're not browsing, you know, uh, let's just say like, uh, what's it, adamandeve.com through like Cutter or, you know, Yemen, you could do United States or whatever. So like it is possible to do that. And of course, like it's free, it's open source, all that fun stuff. So yeah, next up is photos. This one might scare the shit out of you. And unfortunately I don't have a retroactive remedy for this. So, and this actually kind of ties back into families which I'll talk about. So when someone takes a photo of you, let's say on an iPhone, they uh, iPhone will tag your face uh, on their back end to basically make a profile on you. And if you don't believe me and you have an iPhone, go ahead and scroll down to people and you can see all the photos of that particular person tagged in its own photo album. I don't know if that's being done on the phone, on iCloud servers. I don't know how that's done, but it's being done and if you just want to maintain the best privacy possible, just avoid photos taken of you, even in a private environment, just avoid it. For me personally, take my photo. I have a whole damn YouTube channel, so like it doesn't really matter to me, but it's just more ammo for you in case you are really paranoid about that. Because once, you know, a photo is taken of you, it is extremely easy to do attribution with that face with other photos. Think January 6, 2021. Uh, that's probably how a lot of these people got nabbed. Next up, and this one is going to be a sore subject for a lot of people, that is family social media. It is something that is out of your control as far as the content that's shared on there, but it is something I look for almost every time I am looking for a missing person because I might not have a Facebook and I might have never had a Facebook, which I did obviously, but I don't have a Facebook, but that doesn't prevent me from existing on Facebook. And there's nothing I can do about that. Maybe in GDPR. Uh, so if you are of a higher level of threat or you have a higher threat level as far as um, threat profile, so you have people wanting to kill you and kidnap your family and all that. Maybe don't have your family post on social media. Talk with them because again, I don't have Facebook, but all of my other family members do. And some of them just suck at Facebook. And for some reason, for some reason, there is not like extra steps to make posts public. I think Facebook really needs to change how they do things where you could just blanket everything a public thing. Unless you're like a verified public figure, there is no reason for grandma to be posting her entire life with the public privacy settings. That is just horrible. It is horrible, but as someone that tries to find missing people, that is an avenue I trickle down a lot. 
That's how my fiance found a missing child in Trace Labs is because a family member had a public Facebook Facebook account and it kind of trickled down from there. So talk with your family because again, you don't have control over that. You don't have Facebook, but your face could be up on there. Your name could be up on there and all the other things associated with a Facebook account as far as images and you know posts go can be tied back to you. And then the last thing, the last bullet point, and I, I'll, I'll go into like Instagram real quick, is just understanding your risks. So for me, the risks I have, you know, especially having a YouTube account is, you know, shit getting sent to me and people showing up at my house unannounced and getting swatted. Fully aware of those three risks. Now, what can I do? What can you do if you are at risk of something like that? So people finding your address and showing up to your home. Depending on where you live, you can take some countermeasures for that. Uh, have some safety things in, in mind. Um, you know, that is physical security. So guns, knives, things of that nature, deadbolts, uh, and not just any deadbolt, but like actually decent deadbolts, locking your windows, putting a jam in the way. <clears throat> Doesn't prevent someone from, you know, breaking a window, but just understand the risks associated uh, with that. People sending shit in the mail. For me, living in the United States, I have informed delivery with the USPS, so I could see every single package and every single piece of parcel being sent to my house. If I don't recognize it, I don't pick it up. Simple as that. And then getting swatted. Um, this is a discussion you would have to have with your local municipality, your local police, sheriff, state department, whatever, uh, to talk about that. Um, a lot of these places don't have anti-swatting uh, protocols in place, so... If you're of danger, a lot of Twitch streamers out there, uh, talk with them to see if they could get something like that. That you're an elevated risk as far as malicious or fake 911 calls go. So like I said, I'm not going to be sharing anything pertaining to this person. Uh, they are in an elevated um, kind of risk profile. So... What I'm getting at is when I am doing intel gathering on a person, and let's say this person is of a decent threat profile. And by the way, my entire screen is blurred because this person is active duty uh, in the United States Army, and I'm just not trying to you know, cross that road. But one thing that I do is they have great OPSEC uh, as far as like name and all that goes and compromising pictures of military trade or uh, uh, TTPs and such like that. However, this goes back to friends and family not having necessarily the best OPSEC. So this person has quite a decent following. Um, and it's very obvious what they do in the military. But all you have to do is, especially with some of these individuals that have a high follower count and low following count, is scroll all the way down on their following list and you'll start to find people that, you know, it's it's organized by the time of follow. So who they followed first and all of that um, is you scroll all the way down. This is a better experience on the phone, by the way. You can find people that they personally know. Like there is, you know, no reason they would be following these random accounts initially when they created their account more times than not that is not a like an, a, a rule really but it's just something that i have gotten more bang for my buck with you know instead of going from the very top i go all the way down to the bottom to their first following list and when i did that i found people in their unit that are public and it's easy to find public accounts obviously with instagram because it has that little ring around their profile pic and you just click on that and I found out what unit they're in, who they work with, where they work, where they went on deployments, kind of what their day-to-day -day looks like as far as training goes, the buildings they're in. Like this public figure has a great OPSEC, but the fact that they follow some other people in their unit that aren't of a high profile kind of gives away uh, their information or kind of their OPSEC. Uh, and I know they're in the same unit because they have photos together. They're just not tagged. Um, 
So, and again, it's like even in their uh, Instagram bio, it said like U.S. Army. And then you look at the patch, you know, Army patches tells you what unit they're in. So, yeah, that, that's just another thing to look out for. Like, even if you were squeaky clean, people can't tag you. Uh, you don't tag other people. You redact everything in your photos. You could still blow your OPSEC by following people you know. So, I guess it's a good rule of thumb to just have a private account. So anyways, that is it for this video. If y'all enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button with the bell notification enabled so you get notified anytime I post a new video. It is currently April 4th, 2024, uh, and I am looking for two team members for the upcoming Trace Labs on the 20th. So if you're interested, link is down uh, below uh, in the description to my Discord account or my Discord server. So let me know if you're interested. Uh, I'm not trying to get first place. I'm just trying to have a good time and try to find missing people. So that is it for this video. Y'all take care. Goodbye. Are we really interested?